no it's it's crazy it's our intensity is just not there in the final third abhi you are going to be like theek hai benny makati bechara it is his fault benny makati out rudwan isra in lo and behold 8 9 games later still the same right and like you said bang on right after a certain point the manager is getting you we were creating we are still creating two or three big chances in a game not uh, against 20 uh, not tottenham but we mostly create big chances we just don't finish them you know sometimes when you feel like everyone is so negative like you said na johnny i was basically coming out and saying like bre main to buda baba hu if i can do this what stopping you from coming out and playing for the club we don't have a set structure we don't even we don't even attack 90 minutes Uh, of the game, you know, we we have like barely few phases in the game where we find some counter-attacking rhythm, or the other team just you know loses a bit of gas. And I think we really need to have some change. I don't know in the management, uh, in the like in the in players' performances, in players' tactics, in their work rate. I don't know what it is, man, but this is tiring. Welcome to the show, everybody. Joining us today are Animesh and Ronak. They have been on the corner flag before. They are, of course, from the Manchester United Mumbai supporters group, uh, members of the supporters group YouTube channel, Football Bloody Hell, uh, all round nice people. And <laughs> I just thought uh, today was the perfect day for me to have some extra emotional, physical, mental support. QK, it, matlab, it's gotten so bad that Animesh and Ronak have been. Kind enough to wear their United jerseys on this recording. I have a Fiorentina jersey. I have worn it for so many days. You know what G-G-G this G-G-G feels man. like to me? You know when you make fun of a kid too much, he comes with his elder brother and the elder brother's friends. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the elder brother and the elder brother's friends are also losers in this scenario. <laughs> Not saying that animation drama, you guys are losers, but just saying that we are unfortunately following. Uh, a losing club or a drawing club, as it uh, turned yeah. out this weekend yeah. against Aston Villa. Yeah. Um, Mukesh is here. Mukesh is uh, uh, our resident Liverpool fan. So, uska aaj koi kam nahi hai. He is just going to be enjoying this therapy session. He is going to be <laughs> chiming in with uh, ridiculous hot takes uh, till we decide to give him some talking time on the Liverpool result against Crystal Palace later on the show. Much later on in the show. um but yes we start off with that result uh, which was uh, man united 0 aston villa 0 or villa 0 man united 0 considering it was at villa park coming off the back of a 3-3 draw in the europa league against fc uh, 20 uh, sorry against uh, fuck i've forgotten who the team was now <laughs> porto porto and porto porto, yeah. porto. Uh, porto? 2-2 was fc porto, 20 yeah. And three yeah. three uh, was uh, one was one was twenty one one. They could see this is what I, there's so many draws, fucking and against uh, against Porto it was a two nil lead that we that we gave up yeah. and uh, managed to salvage a three three draw. Yeah, Animesh, let's start off with you. Coming back to the Premier League result, should United fans and United as a club be happy that we got a point against Aston Villa away from home? Context. With all the context that we have, no. But if you ask me, after Crystal Palace, I would have taken a Porto and a Villa draw. They are not bad results any time of the year, any season, right? You tell yeah. someone Champions League away, Porto draw. I mean, you should win, but a draw is not bad. Fenerbahce draw, hostile Turkey, okay, fine, whatever. <coughs> right? But yeah. then you lose to Tottenham at home the way you did, right? It wasn't losing to Liverpool. Liverpool United mm-hmm. fans could have forgiven, and they kind of got over it, maybe. Yeah. Then you come into a Villa, which doesn't have Onana, which has been like a pivotal main player for them, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you tell me he passed the message along. I am sacking my players, not to rotate. He just trying to prove a point, right? Yeah. And look, we could have won. We were not great, but Villa won great either. It was a battle yeah. of two very tired teams from their European uh, escapades. Ours was uh, not losing. And yeah. they also was beating Bayern Munich, so that's the quality yeah. of two teams right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, okay, I would still say I am happy, and I might be called delusional because Villa draw is not bad. We beat them twice last year. Should have beaten them. Could have beaten them one nil if Gunnar mm-hmm. knew how to pass the ball. He forgot and he went became prime Jesse Lingard. But yeah, 
<laughs> talking about the rotation, yeah, Rona, in the game against Porto, Delict and Martinez started in defence and they were heavily criticised for their performance because uh, it was quite shambolic, the defending. And that's not something you expect from players like Matis Delict and Lisandro Martinez who are supposed to be our starting Center half choices, right? Like that is the center half partnership that Ten Hag wanted, that the fans were excited about, and we were like, "Fuck, finally an upgrade from Maguire and Evans." And they played so badly that Ten Hag had to put Maguire and Evans, and they ended up keeping a clean sheet and doing a on paper a much better job, including Johnny Evans, who's a 36 year old uh, uh, returnee to Man United, who's playing like he's prime Rio Ferdinand. Wait, guys, was he your best defender? Uh- not even not your best player, but was he the best defender for sure for United? Johnny Evans I mean, in the game? Yeah. yeah. In the game, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did well. Wow. Uh, I mean, you know, it was a surprise. So, after the Porto game, uh, those, I mean, Delict and uh, Martinez, they need to fo- find some synergy between them because they're both uh, not able to cover each other's asses, so to say. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'd give credit to the Porto striker, that Samu guy who was, I don't know, six feet, seven inches tall, I don't know, somehow. And he was just so strong, so bullish. He absolutely manhandled every single United defender. Yeah. So, that was absolutely crazy. But we should have held on to the 2-0 lead. And at least made something more out of it, man. Like, we were so, so brittle in the second half. That guy just absolutely killed us. And... Yeah. Coming into the Aston Villa game, when I saw the lineup, I was like, okay, Tenag is asking for the sack. I mean, yeah. you know, you put in Maguire and you put in uh, Evans against uh, Morgan Rogers and Ollie Watkins, both of whom are very fast and, you know, like to get in behind the defender. I thought we were going in for a hammering yeah. and uh, like a very bad performance. I was almost set for it, but uh, honestly, the nil nil draw is just, uh, it's more credit to Villa's lack of finishing. I'm not saying we were shit. But we were nowhere near good. I mean, I know we had the final 96th, 95th minute counter where Garnacho should have passed that ball and we could have won the game. But, you know, like it's just those individual moments that we're piling for every game. We don't have a set structure. We don't even, we don't even attack 90 minutes uh, of the game. You know, we, we have like barely few phases in the game where we find some counter-attacking rhythm or the other team just, you know, loses a bit of gas. And I think yeah. we really need to have some change. I don't know, in the management, uh, in the... Like in the in players' performances, in players' tactics, in their work rate, I don't know what it is, man. But this is tiring. It's it's tiring to be a United fan. It is very tiring. So tiring that I have stopped watching uh, late night kickoffs uh, in the Europa League because it is just not worth it staying up till two thirty three a.m. to see that sort of. Uh, or that level of performance from the team that you support because not only is your sleep for the night ruined, your next morning is also ruined. So, right. it, it's just not worth it. You can yeah, have that, it ruined a little less by watching the highlights. But that 3-3 game looked fun. Eh? I mean, I the losing the lead part. It yeah. looked like a fun game. I mean, if you're not a United supporter, it was a fun game. Because who doesn't yeah. want to see a team go 2-0 up in like, what, 20-25 minutes. Then lose it to go back to 2-2. Get into a losing position at three two, and then finally have Harry Maguire of all people equalize in stoppage time to make it three three. For the neutral, I completely agree with you. That was a fantastic game. But like, you know, like, have you seen Brentford's last few games? How they've been scoring really early, like the first second minute, they're scoring, and it's yeah. madness. Yeah, and like you know, this game, I think the recent game, I forgot who it was against. Uh, but they got Oops. the goal in the Oops. second minute. Like one minute and 14, 15 seconds. And you should see those first few minutes. Yeah. Like they have nothing on their mind but just put the ball in that half and we'll figure something out. And yeah. I don't see that urgency to score yeah. a goal across 90 minutes in a United game. Yeah. And that is just like, that's that's the statement that defines United right now. Yeah. That that urgency to score a goal is just not there. Of course, all that urgency or the pattern of play or the team selections, of course, comes down to the man in the hot seat. It comes down to the manager, uh, Eric Ten Hag. And, and just going back to Johnny Evans' performance, Johnny Evans also said that the talk of Eric Ten Hag sacking has been playing on the mind of the players as well. Hmm. Now, so let, let's let's shift focus to that for a little bit. Eric Ten Hag in or out has been a question that I feel we have been asking each other for ages now. Over his three years in charge of Man United, we've asked that question every other week almost, I feel like. 
एंड इन द मिडल ऑफ दैट कैसे वैसे उसने दो ट्रॉफीज ले आए बट इट इज लाइक यू सेड रॉन इट इज कमिंग टू अंट वेर यू आर ऑलमोस्ट वंडरिंग एज अ फैन डज ही एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू गेट सैक्ट with the with the kind of play that he is making with the kind of teams that he is selecting is it is it in the club's best interest to sack this manager at this point of time or should they have sacked him a long time ago or what what can be done see honestly like i feel until up until the end of last season and even the start of this season i was fairly on ten hag side because i thought that he did require some time some better reinforcements in the summer and a better structure in the club to you know have better performances but i i question his decisions lately and there have been way too many decisions that i question uh, especially like things like taking rashford off uh, at half time and then not giving amad even a single minute against villa is and he's he's been one of your best performance perform, uh, performers on the wing yeah. and you don't even play him like i i don't know how to defend ten hag anymore and honestly at this point i just have more trust in ineos as a structure like our higher above structure i feel is a little bit better and i just have to kind of trust them to take a decision and kind of stick with it but uh, guys from what i have read a little bit that united is still creating big chances right it's not like they're not creating the big chances but because it's also weirdly a self fulfilling prophecy right imagine you're a player and this big thought is that fuck if i don't score this goal this guy's going to get fired right so then that's why they're not finishing it which means he's probably going to get fired but then it adds more pressure like if there's a clear statement saying like hey boss you are going to you're at this job right let's yeah. say you're at this job for this season if a player has come out and said it's playing on our minds right yeah. that that means if a player says that means it's like heavy on their mind it's not just like, you know by the time it comes up to the surface there's a lot more underneath whereas yeah. if this clarity that he he's not going to get fired because right now it looks like they're getting into that places where they can shoot but they're not shooting because they're like fuck this is terrifying if i miss i don't want to be the guy who misses you shoot <laughs> because you shoot you shoot and then everyone nothing really happens and you have to wait for maguire to do something crazy it's right I'm, our finishing <laughs> has been terrible for the last so exactly. many seasons so, i i feel like the i mean you can coach finishing of course but if your manager is the guy who's getting you till the finishing point like till the finishing point not literally finishing point but till the point where you can hmm. finish a shot hmm. right then i don't know how, how much can you blame him right and like right. you see what happens with chelsea right now right just yeah. they've gotten just a little bit calmer they just calm off for one extra second yeah everybody's calm off for one extra second and that's it Right. right, but, but what I think the United is doing the opposite thing, where they're like, let's add more pressure. Yeah, like, which yeah. it's clearly looking like that's not going to work because if, like I said, a player has publicly said it, and and this is their currently the calmest, not only is the best player, but I'm guessing your calmest player at some level. Yeah, uh, yeah. if he's saying, bro, it's playing on a head, that means I can't even Garnacho and Hoyland must be like shitting, like they must be scared, man. Imagine the pressure on a 21-year-old who's like, if you don't shoot this goal. Then how gets fired? And his kids can't go to school. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh right. man! And they probably play with those kids during Christmas, and they're like, shit, that kid comes to mind, and his wife has bought some new car or something. I'm like, <laughs> what is that pleasure on a 21-year-old Hollywood man? <laughs> we copy mine as go give us exams the next day, and he's like, shit, man! My teacher's like probably under less stress than Eric Ten Hag, and like I'm just walking yeah. in here, walking in, handling all of this. No, it's yeah. it's. crazy it's our intensity is just not there in the final third abhi you are going to be like theek hai benny makati bechara it is his fault benny makati out rudwan isra in lo and behold 8 9 games later still the same right and like you said bang on right after a certain point the manager is getting you we were creating we are still creating two or three big chances in a game not uh, against 20 uh, not tottenham but we mostly create big chances we just don't finish them Yeah. So sometimes when you feel like everyone is so negative, like you said, na Johnny, mm-hmm. I was basically coming out and saying like, "Bro, I'm a poor boy. If I can do this, what's stopping you from coming out and playing for the club?" He said yeah. pretty much that when it's crying, when the rain is falling, and I feel like my tears are being hidden, I can still play better football because I'm playing for United, right? Yeah. Basically saying yeah. all of us other players suck. Like, yeah. grow up, <laughs> like okay, grow up to like Garnacho, Kobe, Mane was a little harsh, right? But everybody else, Eriksen said after FC Twenty. that bro the team who came from somewhere else wants to come and win more than we do so there yeah. is also a discord ki players are not doing the bit but i agree with mukesh bro finishing matlab after a point what is he going to do 
we hit the yeah. post yesterday we could have had that one nil with uh, with bruno um rashford again anthony they are just blindly cutting in and shooting any uh, haphazard right when yeah. number 9 hoyland is finally back everyone like yeah. zerk he's link up zerk he's link up zerk hoyland has come back give him the ball he get five touches yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. and hoyland then coming to bruno give me the ball bruno fernandes goes right wing <laughs> he's away 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 from hoyland hoyland yeah. looking at him by what am i doing here Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I mean like, you know the players. Sorry, sorry. The no, players no, no, no. I think are definitely culpable. Like you know, Ten Hag can't come and kick the ball into the goal for them. Yeah. Like the tactics only play a role to a certain extent. I mean, of course they shape the game, but yeah. if you don't win your duels, if you don't beat your man, if you don't track back, like those one-on-one battles make the game. Yeah. If you don't win the second balls, then eventually you're going to lose the midfield battles, and eventually they're going to run past you and you know get some shots on your goal. Yeah. And that's what's been happening. Yeah. Like more often than not, all of our players they can't beat their immediate man. Mm. If Rashford can beat one man, then he's just headed nowhere, like into the sand. And yeah. uh, Anthony ka to chhod do. Amar was still doing good. Yeah. Garnacho at least Garnacho has some third, uh, like final third production, some productivity. But rest of them, they're just so bad. Like I don't know what what, what is it even. Imagine, na guys, seven games in, eight, seven Premier League matches in. The rest, let's say, ten matches into the season, right? Europe and whatever. Uh, yeah. Link up. Ham yeah. log. We are all the fans are like sad, correct, and hug. Bro, imagine seven, eight games in. The players have given up. Like it's not what demotivation you have in life that you are giving up seven, eight games. Yeah. In. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. So, so that is that is then again it it comes down to the same question, right? What you said, Ronak, is right. Like Ten Hag can't physically come onto the pitch himself and kick the ball. He can't personally put the ball in the back of the net. But mm-hmm. with the way things are going, does the buck stop with him as the manager? Because it ideally should. And as the manager of an elite level football team, he should be able to motivate his players when they are not as motivated. And often times we think that. Sacking the manager and getting somebody else in his place is the right thing to do, or is the right way to go about it. Personally, I don't think so, uh, and I feel like that because it will be the same cycle all over again. We have seen that. Look, it, is, it is absolutely, and it, it, even more so now because I'm saying that Rude Van Nistelrooy may may be given interim charge. It is Ole all over again. Again, this man yeah. has managed in the in the Eredivisie, but he is not managed at a level that justifies his jump up. From that league to the managerial position at Man United, of course, because he's a club legend, there's going to be a lot of good PR about it. He is going to have a certain way of doing things. Everybody will say that cliché line. Oh, but he knows the club, and he is going to get a few good results because that's what happens for any club with a new manager bounce. Sean Dyche managed that with a fucking Everton side. So why won't Van Nistelrooy do it with United? But eventually, that golden period will die out. Us fans, as as toxic as we are, will start calling him gullies and ask for his head, and we'll say unnecessary shit like get Mourinho back, get Ole back, get Alex Ferguson back. By then, uh, you know, uh, uh, I hope that doesn't happen. But if the old man is dead or something, will be there'll be fans will be like, "Nee, nee, usko from death bring him back to life and put him in the dugout." But I feel like if at this point. And and going to what you said, Mukesh, about the clarity that is needed. If at this point any of us come out and say no, we still believe Ten Hag is the right man for the job. No matter what happens this season, he is staying in his job. We trust him to turn this around. We trust him to take this club forward and align with the vision that we have as owners. And uh, regardless of results, we are going to stick with him. If they give him that show of support, which Ferguson had, by the way, and he had that, of course, because he had massive credit in the bag, he didn't need a board to come out and and defend him on the off chance that things went badly, and things did go badly under Ferguson as well. Like we had some horrible results again uh, under him as well. But I feel like because we are in a position that we are on, we are in right now. If the board does that, if they publicly show support to Ten Hag, I feel the players who are so Called trying to get him sacked or not willing to play for him or you know whatever it is, will fall in line because we've spoken about this player power at Man United. Players think that they are going to outlive the manager because managers will get sacked, but players will have longer contracts and they'll stay. 
that's one way to kill it what do you guys think i 100% agree with this like uh, you know in, like if you talk about sir alex ferguson's reign he was very close to the sack united weren't performing very well in the start and you know what saved him was us winning the fa cup in i think 1990 or 91 hmm. that saved his tenure at united yeah so i mean if you just put things into the same context tenag has won the efl and the fa cup so i mean i think it just makes a little bit sense to just let the man have this season and more than anything the message that uh, the players get yeah is more important that you know they have to stick it out with him yeah. if they don't turn up then some other player will be you know replaced because the manager is not going anywhere also yeah. so, guys so that you... is way more important because this cycle is just going to keep repeating yeah no also see you guys see this right you guys have reached rude uh, rude vanistel roy i mean yeah. there are only a few more ex players left before you reach Marcus Rashford or something. <laughs> like you know the the ex player who's like who says I know the club. You guys are you guys now the horizon ending right? We're ten years away. We're, no. we're close to Aguero moment and also Rune. There's going to no, be no, Rune. I, I think this. I think a better pick would be Ashley Young, man. Ashley Young in the United dugout. <laughs> there you go. So this is the order, right? Rune Van Nistel Roy, Rooney. Ashley Young, and then we hit Anthony Marshall, and then we're good. United, bro, done. We're playing Everton right. at like home. That's right. Like the rope is ending. We're playing Everton at home. Imagine Ashley Young walks off the pitch, just pushes Eric Ten Hag, just takes. The- <laughs> Undertaker gets sound effect in the background. Coming, dude. I would, I would fucking love it. All right, I would absolutely love it if. If that was the case, you know, get get uh, fucking Rashford player manager or something like that. But oh, I, <laughs> Phil Jones, he finishes testimonial also. Phil Jones, he's available. Oh, it, yeah, exactly, exactly. It, there's there's give that man a contract. And I just want to say it to every Man United fan right now: all of these options are better than fucking Thomas Tuchel. All right. None of you know what the fuck you're talking about when you say, "Oh, Thomas Tuchel should be given the Man United job." तुम लोग मतलब इतना इतना short-sighted behave कर रहे हो. And fair enough, considering the way we have played, I think a little little shot of dopamine is absolutely needed. But in the words of Arsenal fans regarding Mikel Arteta, trust the process. You know, it's like those uh, night outs where your boy has not seen some action for a long time, so it's like <laughs> stop him. But he's like, no, yeah. you don't understand, and he's like, we yeah. understand. You don't want this. Yeah. You will regret yeah. this tomorrow. That's yeah. where we're at. Yeah. Uh, so, Madam, that is actually another reason why I am in favor of Ten Hag to just stay at the club because yeah. I don't see any proper replacement. There's been talks about Rude Van Nistelrooy. There's been talks about even Michael Carrick. Yeah. Taking over as a caretaker or whatever, and yeah. I I don't see any promise and I don't see any proper long term vision. It's just a stop gap until they figure out what their next long term vision looks like. Exactly, and by the I, time, and by the time they figure out what their next long term vision is, football will change because football as a game as a sport also changes so fast. Managerial philosophies, principles, all of that tactics change so fast that yeah. it is very hard to to see what the next. you know the philosophy is going to be like or the person who's going to be in charge of that philosophy is going to be like and like just Guys, two I, I more things this, here sorry, sorry. No, no, uh, no, no, so uh, even last year or last year, last year whenever we got casemiro we were, we in september in august we got beat 4-0 by brentford yeah and even september was not very good but then by the time march april came we, st- we we were looking a little bit better february was a really good month for us so yeah. i still think that enag can turn things around this season yeah. it's not the end of the world where we are right now yeah and the players are underperforming but uh, yeah i think enag should just stay and just another thing about enag is that if you take away this united stint like just take it back to whatever 2022 23 whenever he came in other clubs were looking at ten hag as their potential successor like you know even liverpool were looking at ten hag for uh, being a club successor and even there were talks about ten hag style replicating guardiola as a little bit that yeah. if guardiola does decide to leave they might be looking at ten hag so at least in his ajax and he was looked upon as a major tactician who knows the ins and outs of the game yeah so i don't think he's just lost all of that I mean, Liverpool ended up getting another ball Dutchman, yeah. so you know, it was Ten yeah. Hag yeah. who was performing much better than the original. But Mukhi, we there's three United fans here who are very, very 
uh, aggressively for Tanah to stay in. As somebody who's looking at this issue from the outside in, especially from a Liverpool point of view, which is a very, very, uh, you're you're experiencing the highest levels of Schadenfreude right now. I'm I'm very sure with a big fucking smile on your face. Uh, what does it seem like? The three of us are delusional right now, or are we making sense? Because I feel like we are caught in our own echo chambers, and uh, we don't know what is reality anymore as United fans. Then again, baby. Ah, uh, no. But ooh, I, ooh, I do ooh. think. See, realistically, what? Like, yeah, I think you're. I think you have to be ten again, because there's nobody else. Yeah. Right. Ah, uh, and right now, United is not a like when Ten Hag took it. There's a prospect of oh, let's take a a sinking great club and make it put it restore it back to its perch, right? Yeah. And thing is, if you sack Ten Hag E2 right now, there's not even that honor. Then it's a proper sink. It's a sunk club. Yeah. It's, it'll be about what twelve years then? I think twelve thirteen years. Yeah. Right. Uh, ah, yeah. so so think about this is. I think this is Liverpool 2002, 2003, right? This is where you guys are roughly are, where you're just Gerard Houllier, Rafa Benitez. That that you'll be roughly in that era, right? Which means you had to like that means by then you are going to have to start looking for guys who are way not top class managers, guys who are who are in low in the pecking order, who are over performing, and get them to manage United. Right now, yeah. I think Ten Hag is the last. Top tier talent that comes to United. Yeah. Does that make sense? After are we, are we, are we considering Tana the top tier talent? No, as in, as in the way like Ronak was saying that he was considered to be the next yeah. big manager. Right. 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 After Ten Hag, I don't think there's even one next big manager who's who's thinking let's go to United. They're probably thinking let's go to City. They're thinking let's yeah. go to Newcastle even in case yeah. the money yeah. pay checks out etc. Right. Yeah. The, Ten Hag, I feel like is your last manager who thought United was a respectable job. Yeah. So you. We better, we better work out with this guy because <laughs> after this guy, you're gonna have to be like, hey, Bang what's on. happening in Bodo Glint? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You're gonna have to look for fucking like, like how Liverpool have to go fucking look for the guy who was doing shit with Valencia and then you know find Jose when he was with Porto. Like you know, you have to really yeah. look in the bottom, like not bottom of the barrel, but the barrels at the bottom to be like, who's that? So that that guy still thinks it's a great job. Yeah, Dan Hag is the last top tier talent you get. Yeah. So I feel like before you fire him, you like it is true. You should be really sure because after this, it's done, dude. United, I don't. United are now not a premier destination anymore. It's done. There's an yeah. entire generation of fans that have now like that are City fans. Yeah. Right. They are just City fans and they're, they're Liverpool fans and some have gone to Chelsea. But that entire wave that would have been United fans is now gone. Yeah. Right. So like the United fans are like. There are, I don't know if there are any young United fans anymore. I'm saying below. Yeah, 25. that's true. I think the only, young, and below. the only young United fans are are pressured by their fathers. Yeah, my yeah. My <laughs> son. Which, <laughs> exactly. Animesh is a new father, so I'm sure yeah. that Animesh's son is going to be a United fan, not yeah. out of love, but out of choice. So let's say this: between the it's ages of five and twenty-five, <laughs> there are no fans of uh, yeah. United. Yeah, that means there's, it's not an appealing job to anybody anymore. So yeah. I feel like. United, I mean Ten Hag in because like this is your last top tier manager. After this, yeah. like I said, Bodo Blind, <laughs> uh, Transpon Sport. Like, you know, that's what that's where we're looking for. Right? Oh God, uh, Ten Hag is our Trump. Uh, make United great again. Make United great again, dude. Like it is, it is weird that it's come down to that. Nobody wants to uh, put Phil Neville's hat in the ring for this job. Just checking. No, cool. Okay, uh, but speaking of the Neville's. Uh, It has been reported that Jim Ratcliffe and the other uh, leadership group of Ineos are having discussions about the future of Ten Hag uh, over this international break. They had one of their first meetings regarding this topic uh, a few days ago, and Gary Neville was spotted going into Old Trafford. So it is suggested that he was a part of these meetings with the leadership team at Man United. Does he really need to be included? I mean, I know he's a long-time servant of the club. He's a club legend, and it, honestly, I, I love the guy. He's, he's been a fantastic servant for the club, and he is a good pundit on Sky Sports as well. But uh, it doesn't this seem like we're giving Gary Neville a little too much importance? Yeah, he's not David Beckham. Why doesn't anyone go get him? 
डेविड बेकम इज टू इज टू फार रिमूव इज लाइक ब्रो मैं निकलने वाला हूं डेविड बेकम इज वेरी वेरी मैच्योर इन द सेंस दैट वो कॉलेज से ग्रेजुएट होने के बाद ना कॉलेज कभी वापस गया नहीं whereas when i was there but it was there ha gary nevel is gary nevel is the guy who goes for every alumni meet he goes to teach us in the college again you know he still road track committee guy. yeah he is in the road track committee he is in touch with all the teachers he is that guy he is fucking uh, amir khan from uh, rangbe basanti wo college chhodna hi nahi chahta hai but <laughs> guys i feel ha sorry sir no no go 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 i have something controversial to say about ex united players which is I don't think any of them. There's not one, you know, in that coterie of like twelve, thirteen players who are very popular and doing podcasts and all that. I don't think any of them actually want United to be successful. I'm sorry, I have this theory that all yeah. of them actually want United to fail because that's yeah, that's the only way they're going to be relevant and they're going to be remembered. The longer yeah. United sucks, the longer they're going to be remembered. I don't think you can trust any of them, not one of them. And I'm saying this. Not just as a Liverpool fan, but I'm saying, no. as someone, if I put myself in a United person's shoes, whether as a fan or a managing committee, think about it. Do you think if United, arey, City got Haaland and they forgot Aguero, yeah. okay, you think anybody will remember Neville? Like, yeah. on, he will, he will barely be a pundit, yeah. <laughs> let alone a great United player who gets to be on the committee of decision making. Yeah. If there's even someone mildly better than him. You know, if oh. I were to, if I were to put on my tin foil hat at this point, I think that makes a lot of sense, and that yeah. com- brings me back to the point and and the problem that I have with Gary Neville being included <laughs> in a discussion like this. Allegedly, <laughs> is that he's an ex player and everything. It's all great, but currently he is a pundit for Sky Sports. His job is to give his opinion on football games that are not just Man United games. he will obviously have a man united color to what he says uh, about every game and especially when united are playing he will have more to say but that is his job his job is not to care about how the team is doing he has not invested money into man united best to our knowledge he is not getting any sort of paycheck from man united he is not associated with the club in any official way and like you said mukesh neither is rio ferdinand uh nor is dimitar bobatov nor is patrice evra or any of these ex united players like uh, peter schmeichel any of these ex united players who have broadcasting jobs right now so why should they be included in in these decisions what are they going to do if you want the advice of anybody who has a connection with united's past then it has to be sir alex ferguson and also only because he is still on the board of directors of the club he holds an official position that gives him certain amount of rights within the club it's it's ridiculous that that gary neville or anybody from that gang is is even called into question then go ask nemanja vidic and i'm like at this point you can ask if you take gary neville you can take any guy yeah. it makes no sense like i think that's a very stupid thing and i wouldn't I wouldn't trust an ex-player of United like yeah. within one ten-kilometer radius of the club. I'm yeah. like, get the fuck out of here. We will do yeah. whatever we can, but yeah. I think because otherwise, how how are they going to get the content, guys? Ultimately, that's the question we're all trying to answer. Yeah. Ultimately, that is the question. Content, guys, yeah. Like they they basically just want the fucking content. And I mean, United is just a content pig right now. Like you know, anything we do, good or bad, there's like ten, fifteen thousand memes about that. Thousand clickbait headlines, bro. Just creating the run order for this. I saw so many fucking clickbaity headlines. Yeah, and who will give a shit about Roy Keane's stupid anger anecdotes? If if there's a guy, if United is actually winning shit, yeah. right? He's like on. Oh, 13th March 2001 I punched a guy from Middlesbrough in the face and <laughs> dude who gives a shit take therapy don't tell me all this nonsense like who gives a shit about I can't believe United fans are lapping up that oh classic Roy I'm like that classic alcoholic that classic that psychopath uh, yeah so no, sorry it, you assume Roy came in enough money from Dead Last Zone huh? He should get some money from Dead Last Zone he should get it मिलना ही चाहिए Roy इतनी तो मिलना ही चाहिए उसको uh but they they kind of skirted the issue by making him a chelsea player no entitled so mm. so maybe that is how they skirted the legal issue right so uh, away from the manager just to 
talk very quickly about on pitch struggles and we start off with the captain Bruno Fernandes he's been having a very very bad time of late i remember early on in the season he missed a few chances and he went on uh, social media and he said fpl players i am sorry but i will uh, give you points don't worry uh wo points nikal raha hai because he's getting a red card on the red card matlab two back to back red cards of course the first one was overturned which is why he was available but honestly his performance made all of us united fans think yaar he should have been suspended for these games <laughs> yeah. i agree i think um you know him being suspended after everything that we saw with the spurs match him being suspended although terribly almost see going in one nil at half time could have gone either way at home yeah. it could have worked yeah. in our favor but that red card yeah. was the killer but yeah. then again we've gone through that match with that right or like okay now he has no option now yeah. mason mount got injured kobe mino technically was half fit for this match <coughs> could have done a zerksi false nine and hoyland like we could have seen something cuz he had no option right yeah now it's again going to be like look he made a point he benched his players he benched he saved ugarte he benched um, dalo sorry bench delight mm-hmm. and martin yeah yeah why is so is it so look this is the argument right pep never benches kdb he hooks kdb off when he's not fully fit arteta never benches uh, odegaard no matter how bad he is because he's the captain he's a, he's that player right yeah is bruno fernandes a quarterback on paper yes but yeah. is bruno fernandes unbenchable never even in his first season when um, under tenax first season not bruno's the signs were there that he's struggling with uh, with ten hag there was always a problem so as a ten hag why am i favoring this guy so much more i think the only reason he's not benching ten hag na is because he's himself been like ronaldo se bhed liya uh, sancho se bhed liya rashford se bhi chalu hai i can't take one more i'm playing this guy he's my captain i think that's the only reason he's playing him i don't think he wants to play him genuinely i don't think ten hag wants to play him but he's just smoking and sulking when he's having a bad time Bro, I love Bruno. He's my favorite player in the last ten years. But man, he takes everyone down with him. Like man, on. I can't wait to hear you talk about the players you hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but he, you you make a valid point there. Uh, he is the quarterback on paper. He is one of our most important players. He is the focal point, or at least on paper, or at least supposed to be the focal point of every attack that United makes, right? Don't you think, Ronan, that he has enough credit in the bank? right from his first season under ole where he literally was giving united fans and fpl addicts like reasons to celebrate weekend on weekend don't like, you think know, he has enough credit in the bank to be that unbenchable player and i say that because often times and it has been said by sir alex also and by managerial greats also if you have a player like that who is a mercurial player you play him through his bad form you play him through the lows in his in his career because the only way players like that get out of it is by going at it all over again that happened with rooney as well rooney also had terrible moments of but you used to of bench form. him to get him angry on the bench see ferguson used to bench him eventually in desperation in those seasons mm. bruno maybe yeah, just gets yeah. an anger to freaking anyway sorry ronak was it see i yeah. think bruno like see when rooney was an angry fellow like you know his yeah. his reaction was anger and then like he would prove it in his performance he would go harder in tackles and then but bruno is a little different like you know he's yeah. not every player is the same he's more whiny yeah. and you know that we don't like he, he sulks but he definitely has enough points in the bank he's a captain he plays every single game yeah 90 minutes or 120 minutes whichever it is he plays yeah. through it all he yeah. runs his lungs out yeah and there's no player that runs as much as he does Mukesh, and, Mukesh would say that he is our James Ward Prowse because back in the day Mukesh had a particular liking for James Ward Prowse only because he was available for every game and he was very happy when Ward Prowse went to West Ham. Where is he now? Fucking Nottingham Forest, where he got sent off. Which, by the way, is the only team that's beaten Liverpool. So, okay. <laughs> so in a way, he has proven. <laughs> Right. He has proved you right. I don't always you, you, vouch for James Ward Prowse. Yeah, you were saying wrong. Right? Uh, yeah, so Bruno, uh, yeah, like I think he's definitely a player who is unbenchable and who stays that way because he, as you said, he's mercurial. He's known to score goals, give assists, and you know, yeah. be that FPL asset really. Yeah. And you know, 
जस्ट कंपेरिंग दिस नो कंपेरिजन एब्सोल्युटली बट अ प्लेयर हु जनरली लाइक्स टू विन हु लाइक्स टू स्कोर हु लाइक्स टू परफॉर्म हु लाइक्स टू बी द मेन मैन समवन लाइक रोनाल्डो इफ ही हैड इवन टू गेम्स दैट ही डिडंट स्कोर आई नो देयर इज बेरली एनी टू गेम्स दैट ही डिडंट स्कोर टुगेदर बैक टू बैक बट बाय द थर्ड गेम ही वाज सल्किंग ऑन द पिच ही वाज एंग्री एट एवरी मिस शॉट and when you put that into context with united where we've been struggling yeah. and he's the one who's the captain he's the one who's been running his socks off and who's not who's you know he's hit the post so many times who has been low in form yeah you have to think about his mentality also he's trying so hard and yeah. at this point to bench him would be absolutely brutal yeah yeah exactly i absolutely agree just a quick one before we uh, wrap up the united chat and give mukesh something to speak about I feel like players who leave Man United are having a great time everywhere in the world because uh, Angel Gomez is killing it for Lille. Uh, there are talks that he also made his England debut, by the way. So you know, great for him in that sense. He's not ruling out a return to Man United as well in the future. So as soon as he left, his fucking his career is kicked off. Uh, David De Gea saved two penalties for Fiorentina. uh it posted on social media started in spain made in manchester loving it in italy so you know he's he's also playing to all the galleries in his social media posts but uh, two penalty saves in one game which we never got to see as a man united player but good for him david day good for you uh, scott mctominay is loving life in napoli he is like scoring every other game uh, and and as united fans you think about hindsight right like in a season where we are finding it so hard to score goals Here is one man who has done this exact thing for United. He's come up clutch so many times, and now he's doing that for Napoli. And we are. I don't know scores. why he was sold. Still, I don't know. Just quickly tell yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, one of the worst decisions. Profit, 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 profit okay. and loss statement. Yeah, that's it. It was purely a financial oh, decision. Because I remember, even as a rival player, being like, "Hey, man, this guy is so good. This guy seems like purely, he's... purely a financial yeah. decision. We had to balance the books, and he is an academy prospect, so his entire fee is complete and utter profit." uh one more united uh, ex united player who's uh, had his fortunes uh, really really go well is paul pogba kyunki uska drugs ban reduce ho gaya from 4 years to 18 months wo agle saal se football khelna shuru kar sakta hai you have to mention greenwood on that list as well man no 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 we don't mention greenwood on this podcast <laughs> fuck that guy fuck the rapist fuck him i'm very much against greenwood fuck him he can do whatever he wants anywhere else mere ko i don't want anything to do with him Yeah. And they got three strong political stand. Yes. No, how about course, that? At this course, point, Greenwood will come back and be our coach. Yeah, <laughs> going back there. <laughs> I mean, it does look like our players need some sense being beaten into them. Am I right? No, too dark. A uh, uh, fucking <laughs> domestic abuse joke. Okay, cool. Moving on. Moving on very, very quickly. Ye shayad edit ho jayega. Yeah. Pakka. Uh, I'll make a commotion right now just because I care about your career and life. I'm like, 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 No, no, I'm not going to edit anything. Right, let's talk about Spurs really quickly because we lost three nil to them, uh, and they also let a two nil lead slip against Brighton, and they lost three two. Why isn't anybody saying the same things as they are saying about Eric Ten Hag about Ange Postecoglou? Or is it that we are such uh, 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 cogs in the algorithm machine that as Man United fans we don't get to see that side of the media and of social media? Yeah, Spurs didn't dominate English football for twenty thirty years. <laughs> That's yeah. true. No, that is true. That is <laughs> yeah. why there is more uh, 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 focus on the the results and the trials and tribulations at Man United. Pretty But, much. Uh, Mukesh, see where we've come down to, man. Like uh, our our source of pride is what we did thirty years ago. Pretty much. <laughs> How the? What? How? What is the phrase? What is the what phrase? Is, what is what is the phrase, Mukesh? What, what is the phrase? phrase? How the tables have turned and the turns have tabled. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Like Michael Scott. Like I like said, Scott you guys are in your Gerard Houllier and uh, finding Rafa Benitez around. Yeah. There's a while before Klopp slash the next Fergie comes. Because I think that's how it's been for United also. Even before Fergie, there was a big period of drought after Matt Busby, right? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so I think, so I guess this is how this is the history. Like this is the cyclical like, think, nature. Yeah, this is how it is to be a United fan. Yeah. But like just I'm one guessing. thing which is like hopeful, if if Ten Hag does manage to turn it around at United, yeah, 
then i think there's nothing this man can't do like then fir to kuch bacha hi nahi then then he just keep going up like yeah. because then he faced the worst of it and still yeah. come out on the other side yeah yeah i mean one can hope man that is the yeah. hope that we live <laughs> with that is the hope that we pray for blind hope <laughs> uh, but spurs are the first club in premier league history to lose 10 games in which they led by two goals or more now can we shift the question yeah let's let's shift that question to ange postecoglou right and i feel like ange doesn't get the kind of hate that ten hag gets because of the kind of personality he is and how much that differs from ten hag as a personality ten hag is very dutch he is very to the point very blunt uh does not have charisma at all even though he tries very hard for it <laughs> whereas postecoglou being australian he is very pally with his players he is very pally with the media he can get angry and he can shows it to the media and to his players but by and large everybody loves him and yeah. how much of that should color your opinion about how good of a manager you are or is it just spurs no it's just spurs but like before when the season started now when they lost their first 3 4 games yeah. he was asked the same question like tenag was asked by tenag came out and said i'm the second i'm the second best team behind man city because we won trophies i yeah. mean that's not what he meant to say but that the dude doesn't know translation right so yeah. Yeah. context uh postecoglou was also pressed in the media he's like mate i don't think i'll win my second season i always win in my second season right mm-hmm. he was under pressure United को हरा दिया डन दैट्स इट बेसिकली यू बीट यूनाइटेड प्रेशर ऑफ यू बट ऑनेस्टली अगेन यू बीट यूनाइटेड यू वेंट अहेड ओके वन द लास्ट फाइव गेम्स इंक्लूडिंग यूनाइटेड सो यू टर्न द फॉर्म अराउंड बट देर अगेन दे कम एंड लॉस टू ब्राइट एंड दैट इज मीन स्पर्स एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो द क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ पॉस्टिको ग्लू आई प्ले हाई लाइन फुटबॉल ओनली बट इट्स नॉट वॉट यू टॉप फॉर लास्ट इयर एंड इज डबलिंग डाउन दिस इयर दिस इज माई स्टाइल ऑफ प्ले His yeah. style of play is not working. It didn't work last year. But everyone was like, "Oh, look at Postecoglou's style of play. Tenaga has no style of play." Although they yeah. keep saying style of play, it triggers me anyway. But <laughs> style of okay, yes, style of play, properly proven, not to finish for top four, like yeah. no chance. Yeah. Doubling down on this year, wants to go beat Chelsea the same way. Didn't work last year. They got tired. Same with this. What is going to happen to him? But he's yeah. like a messiah, right? Okay, because it's yeah. first, like Ronak said, but. I mean, then it's a little bit of delusion there, right? Like media is like, "So, jo karna hai, karna hai, like, who do who care?" Yeah. In the yeah. corner. Oh, I actually find it funny. I think after the in the post match, post the goggles, like, I've never seen it anything like this before. And I think everyone's like, "We've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen it nine times to be specific. <laughs> <laughs> We've all witnessed this." Uh, I'm like, I know you've come from coaching Japan and cut teams in Australia, wherever Coglu. <laughs> Postcoglu came from, but we've so we've seen this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty much on brand or whatever. But yeah, you're right. Anyway, she he did say that I always win in my second season. वो क्या जीतने वाला है ये season? दिल दिल जीतने वाला है वो. Audi Cup, Audi Cup, Audi Cup. Wow, actually वो already जीता हो. So you know maybe maybe that is the way uh, that is what he meant. Um, all right, Mukesh, let's give you a forum to talk about because Liverpool beat Crystal Palace one nil. again like army slot credit where it's due he is come in lots of expectations on him uh, actually no expectations on him i think the beauty is this nahi re no, expectations okay, to tha not, there was not one okay there is not see because first of all i'll do why okay he was third choice technically in the public i know i don't know what no one knows what happened behind doors maybe he was yeah. actually the first choice but and the first two were just like fakes or whatever yeah. But as far as the general discourse in the lead up to finding Klopp's successor was concerned, Slot was third choice. First was uh, Alonso, then there was Ruben Amorim, and then Slot came up. Right after these two, other people gave up. So the good thing is Slot has no had no expectation. Everyone's like, okay, everyone's like, this is the David Moyes season or worse. Like finishing on par with David Moyes would have been like a good thing. Is what the how the general tone level. Like, Everyone like, ah, how it happened. People are like, they weren't even considering Liverpool as a, as a. They're like, okay, chalo, they'll finish somewhere in the top ten, and then we'll see top four, four, five to ten. That's where yeah. Liverpool will be somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's no way. so good. Come on, we hope for that. But uh, but you have to say there was some expectation, man. Like uh, if you're following Klopp and you're you're getting that team. There were expectations from David Moyes also. Like if I go back to 2013 and that fateful season yeah, that is etched into our memories forever. Uh, 
everybody was like, oh fuck, he's the chosen one. Alex Ferguson ne personally isko select kiya. <coughs> Wo bhi Scottish, ye bhi Scottish. Everton, Everton jaise club ko top four mein leke aaya ye. What will he be able to do with a team like United, with the superstars that United have? And then of course it all went to shit. So if you, if you look at the circumstances, it is similar. No, with Arne Slot also it's similar. Was taken, uh, he, he took what, Feyenoord? Was it Feyenoord or PSV Eindhoven? Uh, Fine. Fine. Kamar and Feyenoord. Yeah. Feyenoord, right? So he was doing well with in the Eredivisie. He was he was getting rid of Ajax's monopoly in Eredivisie. Uh, young manager, selected not by Klopp, but Klopp also had that moment. You no, know, when it was his send off, he was, he started Dante. chanting Arne Slot's name and all. Wo sab, wo sab PR giri kiya na Klopp ne. So he also did his bit to to tell. Army slot in a in a very uh, subtle or non-subtle way. Ki boss, now it's up to you. Now I have also given you vote of confidence. Now you see what you can do. And he came in and he took Klopp's players. Like he's not made signings. Like Kiesa is the only signing yeah, that Liverpool yeah, made. Yeah. So it is by and large Klopp's team. So in a certain way, it's the same sort of similarity. You can't say that, oh, it is in hindsight, you can say ki ha, David Moyes season a but when David Moyes actually came, there were expectations. And similar expectations, I think, are there with Slot as well. The good thing is, he's only faltered against Nottingham Forest. And we all thought, as United fans at least, we were all like, oh, fuck, now it begins. Amazing. Yeah. Let's have fun. But it was just a blip. It was, you know, it was not the norm. No, it but was I'll, not the... Be like, I'll tell you why I'm not too... I mean, of course, I'm happy and all that, blah, blah, blah. But I do the only reason I'm not uh, getting carried away is because I feel like the real tests, because I feel like Liverpool have only played easy teams, and I'm including United in that list, mm. right? Mm. They pretty much played. Sorry, guys. I know it's brutal after almost what 45 minutes of bashing, but to be honest, I feel like whether it's Bologna in the Champions League or even AC Milan, they are they're all softer teams. Yeah. Not teams. And now I feel like after this, he's playing Chelsea. Now this is a Chelsea that's on the rise, right? This is a Chelsea that knows how to shoot. I now mean, it begins. It is a Chelsea that nobody knows. It is, exactly. it is including I mean, Bereska. Yeah, including. Uh, so, the, yeah. So, pretty much even the players, right? The, all the other teams that say we've played so far, the players know how to play them, beat them, etc. Now, of course, the, the clean sheets are impressive. It is crazy that seven games only two goals. Yeah. But I do feel like whatever happens from now on, like, I mean, for, I think two weeks later is the first game and it's against Chelsea. That, that to me is when the real slot era begins because to me all of this just feels like one because they're actually they were all easy teams mm. there was not one really challenging team anywhere in between once we started Chelsea and I think there's a bunch of tough games after that that to me is the real that's when slot era begins until now we just in fact I'm, I'm thinking like fuck three points are lost what three points that you'll find damn hard to get in December and Jan I'm like yeah. now you've lost that also you've lost those points yeah. crew <laughs> like even watching liverpool like, apart from a few tweaks here and there with the formation with the system with the way they approach the game but more or less i feel just lost just come and say like see you guys are, you guys know what you've been doing i think just keep trucking along like you know you you, do, you guys are doing great <laughs> just, yeah. yeah let's let's do it yeah. <laughs> i like how, uh, in the world i yeah, like how mokesh like... did a double tap on uh, united with the easy fixtures thing yeah. he came back for it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But also, can you imagine how nice it must feel for a fan of a club to say, yeah, these were all easy teams. We are watching this, 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 we are game this, no game is an easy team. Every team is a bogey team. Every team yeah. is a bogey team. Brighton bogey I, team. But Brentford are yeah. a bogey team. Yeah. <laughs> every, every match is a banana peel. Every fucking game. Right, before we uh, before we wrap up, of course, Chelsea uh, drew with Forest. FPL fuck up for all of us who sold Cole Palmer. Did anybody sell Cole Palmer? Never I bought him. him. <laughs> uh, that, you are much better at FPL than I am. I'm second in the corner flag. I've seen it. 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 But anyway, it's over. But the fun part was Everton... And uh, Newcastle United at Goodison Park because Anthony Gordon came back to Goodison Park uh, for the first time, uh, got a penalty and took the ball with a big smile on his face while Goodison Park <laughs> fucking booed the shit out of this Judas as they would uh, like to call him. And then Pickford saved it. 
it was one of the most cathartic moments in a non everton fans life like me absolutely <laughs> doesn't care about everton i felt good because एंथनी गॉर्डन का चेहरा देख के लगता है इसको चमट मारनी है हरामी चाइल्ड लाइक ही लुक्स लाइक अट ब्रैट एंड फॉर एवरीथिंग दैट एविटन हैव गॉन थ्रू ओवर द लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स विद देयर ओनरशिप एंड विद एवरी बिट ऑफ नॉनसेंस पॉइंट डिडक्शन एंड ऑल विच ऑन डैश डूइंग एवरीथिंग ही कैन टू कीप देम इन द प्रीमियर लीग एंड सक्सीडिंग बाय द स्किन ऑफ हिज टीथ this is the victory that they deserved <laughs> you know this is this is that little moral victory that they fucking needed and deserved and i feel like daish also must have said to his players our season begins now <laughs> like abhi isse isse bada le lo but it was also great to see the everton social media account play that clip of the penalty save and put a negative buzzer on it because a fan asked for it they are going all out in trolling their ex players bro imagine you can't yeah. score past small hands man टेकर Psyching him out, then telling the referee, "No, no, I'm going. 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 I'm especially a young player like gordon he knows how to get under their skin man yeah. it's it's not easy to just wait to take the penalty like yeah. a delayed penalty puts so much pressure and especially, that's all it takes especially when you're facing hardcore evertonians behind the goal yeah. who are just like shouting good it's in man it's, it's roaring absolutely yeah. roaring yeah yeah All right. On that note, it is time to end this episode. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us and uh, tell us what you thought of this episode, you can reach us on our social media. You can find Ronak on Instagram at Ronak Vikramsi. This is my name. <laughs> you can find Animesh on Instagram at just the name, same thing. Animesh Thakkar, and you can find Mukesh on Instagram at Mukesh Manjrat. And you can find me on Instagram as well at Amog Randeve. So all of us have just our names as our Instagram handles. You know, we are millennials from a bygone era. None of that fucking too cool for you underscore life. None of that nonsense. United fan forever. Nahi, ye wo sab nahi karte hum log. Uh, but you can also follow the Corner Flag on uh, on Instagram at the rate Corner Flag Pod. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com/slash at the rate Corner Flag Pod. And also subscribe to the Football Bloody Hell Instagram and YouTube channel. Uh, Animesh, where can they find the United Supporters Group on Instagram? My uh, same M U F C Mumbai. M U F C M Mumbai, and you can find Football Bloody Hell on YouTube at. Nothing. Football bloody hell. No, I'm joking. Okay. Just football bloody hell. I'm messing. Just with. search for football bloody hell. Uh, shout out to Kazad Gurda for composing our theme tune. And until next week, it is goodbye from us. So thank you, Animation Ronak, for joining. Say bye, Animesh. Bye bye, guys. Thank you. Say bye, Ronak. Bye bye, guys. Say bye, Mukesh. Bye, guys. And it's bye from me. Bye.